Uh, man, I'm 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 good. I'm really I'm really excited to speak to you today. I'm excited to speak to you too. Like I'm waiting for this and um just for you know like following you and 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 watching how you move, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate that. And um so everyone, this is this is Jasmine. Hello, Jasmine. Hello. You label yourself as a sexual wellness coach. Yes. Explain that to the world. What does that even mean? Sexual wellness is the um, physical well. It's it's a compilation of physical wellness, emotional wellness, and social wellness as it relates to your sexuality. And so what I do as a coach is that I listen to what your goals are as far as your relationship goes for yourself and with another person. And then I help you get there through your daily activities like it doesn't have to be anything extreme but it's just you know small activities that cater to your sexuality that can enhance everything your organs your heart (laughs) your emotions you know your thoughts who you hang out with your vibes so let me ask you did you feel people are kind of out of touch nowadays like the work and working so much nowadays have got them out of touch with their sexual self Yes, and I think a lot of that has to do with the education piece of it. Um, we, as a whole, weren't taught the same way, you know what I mean, about how our body works and how sex is used or what it's used for or what it should mean or does mean to you as an individual. And so all these different people are coming together from different backgrounds trying to connect. And that's one, like, bar- you know, not barrier, but hurdle. And then the second thing is that we all have our own personal experiences. And when I say that, I'm talking about like traumatic experiences. Mm -hmm. And so when we go through that, we um, adapt in different ways. And those adaptions don't always coincide with how we relate to other people. Not true. I was was molested and raped by my stepmom when I was 11. Wow. So I I definitely understand how, how that can change things for I want to say positive or negative, but it can en- enhance or maybe even subdue your sexual nature. Yeah. Yeah, definitely have an influence. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not here to say what's good or bad, what's wrong or right. I'm just here to state the facts and the obvious of, like, this, right. this happened and it influenced in this way. And so is this the way that you want to go? If not, then let's find a different route. If this is the route, then let's do it. No, you're right. I think too, like like you said, the education process is kind of just taught just about reproductive yeah. purposes. That's it. They don't talk about how you should feel or if you feel if you feel a good feeling that even with church as well, I gotta say a religion to it as well, because they kinda don't talk about that. They keep it on the back end. Everybody everybody knows that everyone's freaky in the church anyway. But right. They, they keep that and they're so conservative about it. I think as Americans anyway, we're really conservative about sex. We don't, we see it on TV, but then when we try to talk about it, it's like almost taboo a little bit. Yeah, definitely. You know, so a lot of times you see that happening is like, well, who do I speak to about this? Who do I feel most comfortable with? Sometimes you find your best friend. You have your, you know, your, your, or your counterpart. And even sometimes, a lot of times your, your partner may be more sexual than you are. Absolutely. So in a situation like that, how, how does someone kind of rectify that when you have a partner that's actually, like, I guess, high, higher level aware compared to somebody else? I think all well, the basis of everything I'm probably going to say is communication, right? And so that, that even goes further to just knowing yourself, being self-aware, so you are able to communicate the right information to the next person. Because we teach people how to treat us all day long. And when we get into a new situation, we're going to have to teach that person something that, you know, the last person did that we liked or we didn't like. You know, we're always teaching. And so just kind of like being open to that and okay to that. And then I would say no shaming. (laughs) No shaming your partner either way if they're less um, experienced or if they're more. But definitely talking to each other and just listening and, and, uh, being open to learning and experiencing. No, I like that. I think you're absolutely right. I think you have to kind of take that person's hand, either and either or if you like or dislike something. You got to yeah. tell that person, like, yo, like, chill, I'm good, don't go there. 
or like, yo, I actually like that. Let's try that some more. <laughs> right. <laughs> but just well, like think- you said, that religion piece too is a really big factor because that speaks into our morals and values. And then however we were taught, you know, whatever faith that we were taught in dictates how we, you know, utilize sex or talk about sex or any of that. And that has a big factor just in general, because like it says, like that, that basis of values and morals, that's a big thing that people like. It's kind of hard to navigate, I would say. Balance. You're, right. no, you're definitely right. I think because like you said earlier, you're either taught, you know, school may have a class or your parent would talk to you about the birds and the bees, right? Again, it's about yeah. reproductiveness. But then to the other end of the spectrum, you have porn. And there's right. nothing in the middle that says, yo, like, this is how, not that it should be, but this is how you should go after it. And this is how, like, you know, explaining more about enjoyment and fulfillment through it compared to just having this raw dog sex in this end or this real, just, hey, we're just doing this because we need to make another baby to survive as humans. <laughs> right. And then just to speak on porn for a second, how, how a lot of people have learned how to have sex from porn, but not realizing that porn is... Um, also behind the scenes work. So like all those, you know, like back to back episodes, they take breaks in between, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) and like, you know, sometimes they just go straight into it and then you see like the girl is wet or something like, okay, in real life, you may have to lead up to that. And that's the reality. You can't just jump into it. So it's, it's a lot to go into that porn situation, but that is an educational tool that we have used. <laughs> no, you you're absolutely right. I think you're absolutely right. I think people don't take that into into account that, you know, they are performers, right? At entertainment. And, you know, for forty five minutes you're not gonna be able to sustain yourself like they get like you say, you gotta take breaks. You gotta the, the foreplay, right? Yeah. How important is foreplay? Especially for I guess the men out there who don't understand it, who just wanna just jump into something. Like, how is it so important for a woman to have that foreplay? Our brains are wired differently. I'm not even going to go into all that, but... Oh, please do. Go into it. (laughs) Women, we need a little bit more um, emotional and mental stimulation to really, really heighten some things. Like, for, you know, a guy could get hard and he's ready to go. But a girl she needs to get lubricated down there. She wants, she needs to get in the mood. Like a lot of times women have a lot of stuff going on in their head. So they're like not even mentally in the space yet. And so you just have to be a little patient. And I think that in return, turn out really great for you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's also a thing that because men are so, are so much taught just to be, you know, like macho men and not to be in their feelings that we suppress a lot of our emotional content. Yes, yes. that social expectation for men versus women. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That, you you know, you have, you can't show emotions. You can't be too soft, but at the same time, like you need to have a whole bunch of women, like you need to have a, a long list. It's just so many contradictory expectations for a man I think is unfortunate but that definitely has a big big role in it no I think so I think nowadays I think things are, are different you know you know somewhat you know, they still could know, qualify women to be hoes if they have too many sexual partners but then like she said for a man it's almost like a badge of honor if he does yeah yeah and now I can definitely say that women are are even more liberated than before and so it's taken back that whole term like Call us a hoe, and that's great. You know, <laughs> no shame <laughs> over here. <laughs> no, I, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think it, it's it's a matter of hey, you know what? If it's it's natural, it's a human thing that we do, and we just tend to shame it so much. Like, what does that shame come from? That we you know why we're we so afraid of it, but then at the same time, we do glorify it because, like I said, it's always in the movies. You see that on TV shows, it's there, but then in real life no one really kind of talks about it. Everyone's kind of like, you know, if you see someone wearing a skimpy outfit or whatever, people are already saying, oh, look at that, look at that person. Because nowadays, women are just so free. Like, you know, there's no more bras being worn. There's see-through clothes. Yes. I don't mind it. 
I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> but how um, much? I, I would definitely say the shame this kind of starts at <clears throat> at home. Mm. Um, I'm gonna give you just a small example. Um, I I promote um, sex positive sex positive parenting and that includes you know starting to have the conversation about sexuality with your children starting at three and when I what I mean by that is age appropriate language so when you're in the bathtub and you're teaching your daughter or son about their arms legs ears you know teaching them the names I think it's appropriate to teach them about their anus their penis their vulva their vagina, their breasts, like we skip over those words. And if, and then even if we do say it, we're like giving it a nickname. Right. So we're already lives. like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? We're, we're already trying to make it, I don't know, <laughs> different than what it actually is. And so, and then if we, we start to explore ourselves, you know, once the diaper gets taken off, we start to explore and it actually feels good like legit maybe not in a sexual way but it just feels nice and so depending on how that parent or that caregiver responds to that kid touching themselves that's another way to either shame or empower someone no i think that's as great i think it leads into that as well is when a child becomes a preteen to teenager and Mm -hmm. because at that point nothing has really been taught outside of just generic information yeah. Some, like you said, some kind of some funky word to protect it, right? That's when the teen- teenagers kind of go awry. They're te- testing it out because they're like, yo, I feel something. I really don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm getting, I'm getting information from my girlfriend or from my man over here. Right. And that's, and that's where they're going. They're going to their friends to find out more. And their friends are giving the wrong advice too. Absolutely. Um, I had a friend, he was saying that he went, he went to the library and got all of his information because his parents wasn't talking about anything. I was like, hey. <laughs> right. Do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's a mess. I, you have to go for your, any resource you, got, you have, right? So he went to the library. And I guess this is where you come into play, right? So how, how comfortable or have you helped you know, of course, I'm assuming you help uh, uh, couples as well. How did that go through? Like, when you see someone kind of disconnected from that. Say it again. As far as like, you know, if, if with couples, if someone's disconnected, it's just an actual, just an act for them. There's no emotional connection. Like, how do you help someone with that, with their partner? I mean, we gotta, we gotta try to figure out if that's what you actually want. Nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna happen if that's not what you really want. And that's okay. Like we can get into relationships and figure out that it doesn't work out for us and then separate. We don't have to make it work. You know what I mean? So saying that, yes, this is what I want. I just feel disconnected. I think it's time to do some, some uh, self love and some, some self exploration just to kind of figure yourself out. And then you're able to connect with another person. It's all, I think it just always starts with yourself. Like you can't force it. You have to figure out who you are, what you like, and then we're growing and we're changing. So what you liked last year doesn't necessarily mean you have to like it this year. And you should take the time to figure that out before you expect someone else to figure it out for you. Or you know what I mean? Or just expect them to do it or know it. Like that's not fair either. No, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. You know, um, it comes down, I guess, to your point before that, you know, you just have to be, I guess not a shame of yourself. Yeah. Really comfortable in your own skin. And if you're a little more freaky than your partner, don't be afraid of that either. Exactly. But I and think there's it's different ways to there's different ways to have sex. It doesn't have to be just like penetration. So a person can be freaky and the part partner doesn't always want to have penetrative sex, but you guys can use your fingers, you guys just be in the same room masturbating. Um, you can use your mouths. You know what I mean? Like there's other different ways to, to have sex. And so also being creative with each other. Do you see uh, people kind of lacking that being creative? Yes. Or just kind of falling into uh, a consistent routine. I think it just involves some intentionality of like doing something different because we all fall into a routine and we just have to switch it up sometimes. 
No, absolutely. I think you're right. I think it's a matter of just testing the waters out, man, having fun with it, you know, and telling your partner, yo, tonight, let's try something different. Absolutely. I kind of think that that talk ahead of time won't catch that person by surprise. <laughs> Because sometimes that, if you don't have that talk ahead of time, something goes down, it kind of ruins the mood a little bit. Absolutely. And that's funny that you say that because um, I was talking to a couple and I just threw out scheduling a time where they're going to connect. And she was like, what? Like, isn't that going to ruin the mood? And no, it's not. Mm -hmm. That's my answer is no, it's not. Like if two individuals have two different schedules, put it on your calendar and have something to look forward to. And then you guys can, you know, foreplay through text messages on the day of, you know what I mean? Or foreplay through conversations like, I can't wait to see you tonight. Or, you know, sending some crazy emojis with the time. Like, that's the type of stuff that's going to get you ready. Because the now when that time comes, you, you ready to go. <laughs> no, I think, you're, I, think, I think you're completely right. I think what a lot of families tend to, to fall, fall from is when everything else becomes more important than themselves as a couple because they have kids that have routine yeah. and it's like how do you make time for that and like you said you got to schedule that in and yeah during work during lunch break or just whenever start texting each other say some cool little shit to each other and make it like real exciting so by the end of the night you're like yo i can't wait to get this and as far as health benefits what does that bring to the table so sex is, when you learn about sex, you're learning about your body, right? I mean, it's just a biological makeup. Um, and so your health, how it, it kind of dictate, dictates how your organs work, right? And so for men, if your blood is not flowing properly, then there goes your erection. For women, if, you know, your stress levels are too high, there goes your pH balance, or there, there goes like, your lubrication levels and things like that. There's so much more to it, but it all works together. Like what we feed or what we, um, what we eat can be what we taste like. That's, that's a good one. I don't think people realize that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think especially for men. Like. Like. Yeah. yeah. And then men, men have a, um, it's not just women who have different um, odors. Men have mm -hmm. different odors in their um, sperm. Yeah. Definitely so. I think the other thing too, I think what people need to understand is that the playfulness of it, you know, not having it so erotic all the damn time. You know, it doesn't have to be, like I said, like that porn movie, right? Yeah. But I think having that, that's the fun and just enjoying it in the moment. Yeah. Because we got so much shit going on, right? We're, everybody's busy. We constantly think about other things. Like you said earlier, like, you know, sometimes women just have all this stuff in their head going on. You know, helping your partner kind of just get away from that, and a, a, a simple, ca you know, caressing and hugging and touching, a lot of that just could calm you down, man. Bring your blood pressure down. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, just physical touch releases different um, hormones and endorphins. Absolutely, I think that I think that's what people need to understand too. Is not so much just right right in the bedroom, right? It's about hey, if I see my wife cooking, I'm gonna come behind her, you know. I'm going to go nip on her ear a little bit, kiss her, her neck, you know, caress her a little bit, kind of fondle her a little bit, right? Right. But doesn't mean like, you know, we're going to just go, go at it right then and there. And same thing, you know, vice versa. If I'm cooking or, or I'm walking around, she just slaps me in the ass or something. It's like, you know, just being playful in that way. Because then this show also shows your family, I guess, with kids. Because you know, again, like, it's, it's like, the kids hear mommy and daddy. Absolutely. <laughs> and they're watching you too. Yeah, they're watching absolutely. You on how to relate to other people when they get older. Exactly. And that's that's the biggest thing too. Like, you know, and I guess kind of could go back a little bit, like when we talk about, you know, introducing it when a kid's a child to go back into the teenage years, like there's no real true age you can say that anyone feels comfortable with a teenager having sex. Right? Is I think that's more of a society type of thing. We just feel like they shouldn't at all. And then it's like, okay, well, okay, they turned 19, 18. Okay, I guess so. They're, they're so-called legal by law. But right. the body has made them viable way before that. You know, so there, there has to be a balance. And I guess if something was like that to happen, whether you have a boy or a girl, 
I think the conversation has to be the same. You can't go rah 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 for the boy and then say, "Oh shit," you know, go yeah. crazy. Your girl, your girl, your daughter, you know, has it. Like it yeah. has to be a bad thing from an educational standpoint. And I guess it's to your point. I, it's a lot of things, right? Because you have to go from education on top of, yeah, I know it probably felt good. It's a weird conversation to have with your damn kid. It is. <laughs> <laughs> It is, but you have to have it, and you have to just, and I think that's the part that some parents that I've noticed, they avoid, because they're not ready. So they, they know that their teenagers are developing and ready to explore, but they're just not ready. So if I don't have the conversation, then maybe it'll just, you know, slow down a little bit. No, I, no, I, th- I think you, you have to, because listen, if, you, if, you're, if you're a person that you know you're fucking freaky, most likely you pass that gene on to your damn kid. And so if they're going at it at the bathroom or you just sleep in the damn bedroom, right? You have to prepare them for that too because they, they may think they're broken. They may think, damn, is this normal? Right. Should I be masturbating this freaking much? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And should I be afraid to, to masturbate? Is it wrong? You know, am I doing it too many damn times? Like, you know, it's like you have to prepare. You have to prepare these kids to know what? It's normal. I go through the same thing. This is how I do it. This is how I control it. Yes, it's an awkward conversation at first, but I think once you have that openness to it, it's not that you're saying, yes, go go, go have sex with everybody at a certain age. Mm-hmm. You're saying, yes, this is what happens to you. This is what has happened yeah. to me. This is what continues to happen to me. Because you just get older, and you know, kids think you know, you're broken when you get older. <laughs> That's what we want to think, at least. <laughs> exactly, right? And we get freaked out when we hear our parents do, like I said, but it's like, yo, it's, it's, it's part of it. That's how, that's how you got here. You know, yeah. and, and couples just, I think we just have gotten to a point to where we have other things as a stress, like social media. Instagram is horrible. You have all these superficial people looking the way they look on Instagram. And you have this disconnect from the actual person. How does, how does like, you know, do you get the same pleasure from looking at something like that or from porn compared to actually the interaction with the person? Do I know? I don't think anyone does. Yeah. No. No, I, I agree with you. And it's, it's, it's a matter, I think people, but I think people have used it as a substitute. Yeah. And yeah. Almost, and I was kind of forgetting about, hey, what is it about? having this person for real for real here because me and my me and my um my, my wife we had a long distance relationship for a lot of years really right yeah i'm going through that right now are you yeah how so, did you guys go for so many years <laughs> so um we met through facebook right and uh, i was in atlanta i'm still in atlanta now and she was out in pa so i want to say wow it probably was i think it was three years Three years were kind of, you know, the whole the you know, FaceTime thing at first. First it was over the phone, then FaceTime slowly went into it. Then there's a visit, another visit. You know, it kind of just broadens up. Um, but, yeah, we had we had phone sex. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, as, as You do what you have to do, right? You, you want to be with that person that's in the closest way is just hearing their voice. And it's weird because I think that – that time I felt so, even though it was over the phone or whatever, the connection was so strong because mentally you had to kind of really prepare yourself to that. I can't have this person no other way. So you're listening intently to everything that person's saying, their breath, you know, just every word. And you're trying to be as creative as possible because you have no choice to, but be as creative because you're not physically there to do certain things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I do. So, so that right there is is a challenge. That's one, right? And the second part of it is also have, making sure that you actually get to know the person a little bit more because you're forced to conversate. You know, you really can't ignore that person when you're on the phone, right? So you're forced to conversate. You're, you're forced to, 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 I don't want to say forced, but you're willing to learn more about that person more intently. Mm-hmm. So then when you have these engagements together, when you have the sex, it's intense, it's 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 really gratifying and satisfying, and yeah. it took us about th- three. It was three years. I can't forget. Like, you know, it was a matter of again, like we were just boyfriend and girlfriend. We weren't trying to be married. We weren't trying to play husband and wife. We we're like, yeah, we're gonna be the boyfriend girlfriend role. 
whatever that looks like for us, right? And then she went up moving down to Charlotte. I was in Atlanta. She was like, yo, I'm not going to move down until you put a ring on it. I know that's right, girl. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> you know, no doubt. And now we know we're married. <laughs> so it's um it's it's all about that. And also respecting her or like her being so such a strong woman and mm-hmm. putting those boundaries there was like, man, that even made me go after it even more. Mm-hmm. You know? You know what I keep I what I hear you saying is want, willing, boundaries, intention. Yeah. Uh, all those things. You have to have all that, right? Because if you don't, then then what are you really doing it for at this point? Because you can talk to anybody and kind of just masturbate, right? So it's like, oh, you're just doing it on your own. But it's not even about that at that point. It was, it's, it was more about the connection, the communication. And it was like, oh, damn, we want to do this? Let's, let's do this then. All right, let's do it together. Let's, let's time it. Like, you know, let's make this happen. It was an intimate moment, even though we were like a thousand miles away. But it was still that, you know, that planned conversation or sometimes it was just a conversation that led to it out of nowhere, you know, or you had in the back of your head, but you wasn't sure how to come up with the, with the, to the person and that person wanted to be down with it. And you're like, all right, bet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make it happen. But you're right. It's like, it's a lot of, a lot of levels to it. Um, and I think it's, that's kind of a new thing. That's not as foreign anymore. People have a long distance relationship now since so because of the internet, social media is, is bringing the world a lot, a lot more accessible to other folks. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So you say you're in a long distance relationship yourself right now. I am. And I miss him so much. <laughs> <laughs> He's back in Atlanta. I was living in Atlanta um, for a few, um, probably like five years. I just moved out here to Phoenix, um, I want to say last September. And he had to stay in Atlanta for the you know majority of time because he has a daughter. And he has some work stuff that he has to wrap up. So we like, I had to move though for my own personal growth and journey. True. So we allowed each other to do that. He had to stay for his own personal journey and growth. Yeah. So why, why, why Phoenix? Phoenix? I wouldn't, th- I wouldn't think of Phoenix. So I wanted to hit the West coast. Um, so that was my first thing. And then I started looking at cost of living and mm-hmm. Phoenix is one of the lower lower end places than all of California. <laughs> and I didn't want to be in Vegas, but like, I think those are my three states. Um, but I was like, I'm down to go to California, Vegas or Phoenix, I mean, or Arizona. And um, my mom, she was here in 2015 for like nine months. And I came down here to visit with her for a month and I loved it. So really? I was like, I know I got good vibes, so why not? <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. I've been to Phoenix a couple of times, um, and it was it was different for me. You know, coming from Brooklyn, from New York, like you know, seeing all that dirt and just and then coming from now I live in Atlanta, seeing all the damn trees. Then going to Phoenix, it's 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 a difference. It's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's still it's still hills and stuff, but and mountains, but definitely it's so green back in Georgia, so green. Yeah, absolutely. So how does that change you too? Like, do you feel like your your new environment has that in, increased your sexual capacity? Has that done more for you because now you're mentally like in the right place? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so um, my personal story um, in 2016, I had a stillbirth. My daughter, she was, I think, about 21 weeks, definitely 21 weeks, and um, her lungs weren't strong enough, so she came out and she survived for maybe like 30 minutes but that was like a major traumatic situation for me and I lost a lot of um, confidence and just sad depressed um you know just all the feels that she would feel losing daughter. um and so for me I needed to just kind of get away I needed to get a new space like I went to uh, Georgia to complete my graduate program and so I finally graduated and at that point, nothing was kind of holding me there, just a whole bunch of memories, you know what I mean? Right. And so um, I had to leave. So that was my decision. I was down to kind of go anywhere, but I wanted to go somewhere warm. I love the palm trees. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, um, so, that, so when that happened, uh, you know, like I was saying, the loss of self-esteem was major. 
Um, and then how I was coping was so unhealthy, like drinking and just eating whatever. Um, and so that weighed on my body, not working out as much as I used to. Um, that definitely weighed on my body, especially because I did just have a delivery and I didn't kind of, you know, regroup as I was supposed to. Um, but being in that mental space, I, I just couldn't move forward. I couldn't get up. And I know I wanted to, but I just couldn't. And so me moving to a different location, that was me trying to place myself in a new environment so I can, you know, lower my stress levels and, and kind of just open my eyes and regroup. And it definitely worked. I mean, I came out here on a mission just to find peaks. Like it wasn't to work a great job. It wasn't, I don't know, I'm going to, you know, grow my business over here, which I, you know, that's the plan, but that wasn't the mission. The miss mission was just to find peace. And then I found it. I mean, I'm still finding, I'm still living in it. But with that came the great job. With that came more clients. With that came this interview with you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'm able to sit here and actually tell you about it without dying. <laughs> 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 which, I, which I'm so proud of myself for even like just being able to talk to you about it. And so for me, that's what sex care is because it was a, it was a relational trauma. Like me having sex led to, and me being in love led to me having a baby, which led to me losing that baby. So now all these things are associated. So, you know what I mean? Like wanting to really fall in love again, that was scary. Wanting to have sex again, that was scary. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's not, that's not really how I want to live my life. But in order to protect myself from that fear, I had to avoid it. And so, you know what I mean? Those contradictory things, that wasn't a, that's not a, that's not a happy life or a successful life. So what, what, what took you to that place to where you want to be a sexual, sexual awareness coach? Like, what was that transition? When was that kind of that light bulb moment? It was like, you know, I think I have something here. So my background is clinical mental health counseling. I've always been on that path. Um, and I always kind of wanted to go into the sex therapy realm. Do um, you remember Dr. Sue and Dr. Ruth back in the Absolutely, day? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Those were my like original idols. Like I'm like, yes, I think I can. Because I don't mind talking about sex. My um, my family, they, they're they pretty open. So I, I never really had too much shame as far as talking about sex. Um, and so... I'm like, I can do that. So that was like my journey. And then when I was in Atlanta, I started working at a residential home for girls who were sexually exploited. Okay. And then um, my internship was with, um, I did groups with sex offenders. And then I also counseled children um, who were sexually assaulted. So I had all of this like information, all of this background working with all, all these people. And I realized that these type of extreme traumas affected the way that they related just with their family related with themselves but they still had the desire to be in friendships and relationships and all this stuff so that's for me i was just trying to find the bridge to help them get that like we had we were having group group sessions where we're giving them all these theories or concepts but no actual tools to go out and make it happen and so that was my mission was like, how can we find some actual like tangible tools for people to do in order to come from the, the idea of wanting a relationship to actually having it? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Wow. Yeah. So when did you find that spot to say, well, I can monetize this. I could, I can kind of wrap this up in a package and it's like, yo, do you want to buy this package? Like when did that come about? Um, one day, my my mom and my godfather, they were, um, we were in Atlanta, we all went out to lunch, and they were like, Jazz, you need to get um, a real job or something like that. <laughs> and so I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then like, after I left them, like, I'm still thinking about the conversation, and I pulled up on my homeboy and he was like, how about you sell sex toys? Because he knew my mission as far as sex therapy, right. but you have to go through different educational 
levels in order to like, you know, fully do what you want to do. So I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what can I do today and still be on that same path. And so when he said sell sex toys, I'm like, all right. And so I started to look into that. And then I originally just like my brain kind of goes boom. And so I started thinking about like a website where people can just go to to get all these resources. Because I didn't, I didn't want to be just the sex toy lady, but I wanted mm. to educate people like like you, like I was saying earlier, I wanted to educate people on those tools and and just guide them to different people and places because there's hella sexual wellness gurus and coaches and educators out here who are killing it. And so if I can just guide you to them, even if I can't give you the information you're looking for, I think that's all I want. I just want you to know what's going on. And so it started off with the whole website idea then I realized website business is way more than I bargained for at the moment. <laughs> and so, you know, my company definitely went phases, but it always had the same concept of resources and coaching and workshops. So what's your response to like, you know, from, from your decision of career choice or your passion from your family? You know, you said your mother and your godfather, like, yo, get a real job. I'm not sure what that means anymore. Get a real job, right? That's kind of old school. That's like kind of old school shit now, right? Yeah. Compared to, you know, when you have couples come to you, like, what is the outcome for them? Like, what do they feel when they, when, when they go see you? The response that I've gotten was just like, oh my gosh, thank you. And then continuing on with whatever they did last night. <laughs> <laughs> and for me that just one just one magical experience does it for me like if you can just experience that then I feel like I've done my job and you know just through those conversations with couples and individuals because it's always even if couples come to me it's still an individual plan an individual journey it's just now you guys are doing it together and you're using each other as whatever you need each other for in that, you know, in that particular plan. But yeah, <laughs> just the, <laughs> man, just the openness and then the, the, the conversations that they now have with each other are different. Um, that's, that's it for me. That's all I, I mean, that, that gives me life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that's wonderful. I think people kind of misconstrued at the fact that, once you do involve and make sure sex is a priority in your relationship, that doesn't mean that's the only thing that happens in your relationship. It does open a door for, like you said, conversation and just better enjoyment of your partner overall, not just at the sex piece. Mm -hmm. So when someone comes to you and they're like just a disaster of a couple, right? Let's say they're just sexually handicapped, <laughs> right? What does that mean? Like, they're just, there's no connection. You know what I'm saying? They're just like either one wants to do one thing, the other one doesn't want to do it. One's all, or some person's like maybe unwilling to try new stuff because they just want to just do missionary or damn day and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. So when someone comes like that, or do you ha or have you had a couple that's just like just almost in a brink or having kind of a sexual breakdown? No, not as a whole. I would say in different like positions. Like I've had a lot of people who it anal sex like that scenario fits with the whole anal sex idea that one one partner wants to definitely do and the other partner don't and so in those situations um it's it really involves just the educational piece first like you know learning the anatomy and physiology of the anus and the whole body and then learning what you need to do like as far as like lubrication and like always having lubr <laughs> lubricant <Yeah>. um, <laughs> don't just yeah. force it in there because um, it tears easily and that's another thing that you need to understand and then if you're going to use toys have a stopper on the toy because it's a it's a whole tube that's connected to your anus so something gets stuck up there and then now you're at the hospital trying to figure out <laughs> how to get it out <laughs> trying to figure out how to tell the doctor what happened so i mean just in that sense the educational piece starts it and then now that you're well informed now you can make a better decision like am i willing to try this or am i not if it's still a hard no then how can my partner still get this need fulfilled if it's actually like a a dire need and then if there's no solutions 
we need to figure out is this a deal breaker or not if it's not then let's figure out you know some other fun stuff to do together if it is and that's a different conversation no you're absolutely right about that i think the other mistake a lot of people make too is that you can't you can't expect your new partner to be like your last partner yeah you know and whatever you did in the last relationship you know we were you know, someone new you got to start from scratch you got to figure out what's those buttons to press don't press like you, like you just spoke about it, if it's something about anal sex and that person not down with it could never did it or kind of fear it because maybe they had traumatic experience with it. You have to respect that piece of it. You do. And then you, but, and then on the flip side, that person who has had the traumatic experience has to be comfortable enough to share that so their partner can understand. You can't just be like, oh, I don't want to do it. And then like not explaining yourself, but then wanting your partner to like fully understand and empathize. That's not fair either. No, it's not. It's not. It's almost like um, who is it? I think some celebrity. I think it was DJ Khaled. He said that he doesn't go down on his woman, but he expects his woman to go down on him. And it's like, uh, how do you expect that? If you you know you want something, but you're not willing to give it back. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to. It it has to be fifty fifty. And no doubt, there's certain things that you know you may not be comfortable with, hmm. but the expectation of just not willing to do something because you expect it, you know, you just says, no, I don't do that, but you are supposed to do it to me. That, that sense of entitlement is kind of, uh, it's not fun. It's not, it's not really truly engaging. Right. And it's a, it's a, it's an imbalance of, uh, is it power or, you know what I mean? It's just imbal- it's an imbalance in the couple's structure. Yeah. But I guess if that person's down with it, I guess they're down with it. Right. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, with it. Right. What can you do? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. But do you feel we we touched on this a little bit? Do you feel now women have really taken control of their look? You know, especially like I said, with clothes nowadays, women are wearing less and less. And back when I was a kid, I'm an old head. So back when I was a kid, you know, you seen women wearing tight stuff, and they were walking the street. They were hookers. Now, I think hookers are wearing probably more clothes than regular women now in the club, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because you have these sheer outfits, women feel proud. Like I said, there's no more bras. They'll probably have a pasty on to cover the nipple. But other than that, they're free. Like, has this yeah. been the most free? And it's just the right route. Yeah. Are we not leaving enough to imagination to say, wow, I'm seeing everything already? So my imagination is gone from what it can look like over like a silhouette of an outfit or something. Like I love, I'm a sucker for summer dresses, right? Mm-hmm. I see a woman in a summer dress. I'm like, wow, could this, it falls on a woman a certain type of way. It, show, it shows the curves. But when mm-hmm. you show me everything, I guess from me, my perspective is like, oh, wow, I've see, I seen it all now. So where's the... Are you, now, are you now more interested in learning their mind though now that you've seen their body? Well, for me, yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, I've seen it already. The summer dress to me is like, wow, it gives a sense more of imagination. Let me get to know you. Like I, I see something there, but I can't see it all. Because for a man, we, when you, most of the time we're thinking about one, one thing only. That's just how we made, right? That's what people understand. Like it's like having, you know, being in a meeting like with men or women. And men are pretty much like lions. And there's like gazelles all over the place. We're like, which gazelle are we going to get? And that's how we're always freaking thinking. But at least for me, I've seen someone that's like a woman, like, you know, she has a beautiful body, she has a beautiful body. But at the same time, too, she's showing it off. I'm like, ah, it's almost like a turn off. Like, okay, well, everyone's seeing it now. It, and that's, maybe that's just me being old school. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I do. I hear what you're saying, but I, I don't know if, what's the question? Is it a problem or is it? What are not you so much a problem, but is it, is it to a point like, you know, is it, are, are we showing too much? Even down to men too now, men are wearing tight ass clothes. It's like, what are we doing as far as like, are we not keeping things to, I guess, being found out later on? Are we just giving up the exposure to everything right away and saying, hey, if you want it, want it, come get it. This is what it is anyway. I'm going to show you later on. Or I guess maybe I like to chase more. Maybe I like the fact that the woman is covered up a little bit more. I can see the silhouette of her body. Like, damn, mm-hmm. what it looks like, you know, afterwards. Yeah. She says, going to the club and she's just wearing a sheer outfit just with pasties. I'm like, damn, that's everything. That's right there. 
Well, I can't uh, tell you that there's more to a woman than her body. So regardless of, you know, what a woman feels like she's going to wear, she may already think that she still needs to chase. So you still need to figure out something. No, absolutely. And that, that's my point. So it's like, yeah. but for most men, men ain't thinking about trying to get to know the woman on the first day. On the first day. Not going to happen. You know, unless you do something that's really saying, wow, that may be the one, like, I want to get to know her. Yeah. Most men is just we're looking to just have something real quick. Especially if you're in the club. You know what I'm saying? And is, and is that determined on what she has on? Absolutely. Okay. That's the first, because men are very visual, right? So we're going to look at exactly how that woman looks right away. Gotcha. Before we get to know you. Now, if I'm if I'm just trying to let's say I'm trying to date or whatever, then yeah, of course I'm like, all right, let's let's find out what she's about in her head. But if I'm going to the club, I'm not, I don't care what you're thinking. It's at that point, it's all about the sexual act. At that point, it's yeah. like trying to make a connection. Because men and women are different. Where men can really disconnect. Like men, say, they just say if a man cheats, yeah, because women, hey, it was just sex. But for the women, like, how can you say that? To, right. to, to women, it's more than that. And for men, it's like, nah, it really wasn't. I still love you. That was just sex. And that's a true statement. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can definitely have sex with someone else and still be in love with someone else. Yeah. So yeah. we have something like that. Like, you know, is that person kind of unhealthy sexually at that point? Because like I was st- st- stating, where they look at someone and it's just kind of like the sexual act of it. And I wanted to get to know the person to really have that true connection to jumping around to having sex with other people, but to saying, Hey, I still love you though. So is that sexually unhealthy? Yeah. That's a, that's a sexual preference. I would think, um, cause there's some relationships out there that kind of operate just like that. that well, no, yeah, if you're a swinger, I mean, you're down that, with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I can't say that it's unhealthy because if it works for you and you're you're acting healthy in the act, then it's not unhealthy. I would say unhealthy is going around and having unprotected sex with random people and not knowing their status. Yes. But if you're just going out and having protected sex. Even if the other partner is like, yo, you shouldn't be doing that. You should just be with me. But the partner's still kind of strained away. I think that's an unhealthy relationship. Right. Yeah, not unhealthy sex. But yes, I do. I agree. Only because both partners, both parties of the situation does not agree on how this relationship is operating. Right. And it could it could go down to the sexual piece where one person's kind of sexually shuts down and the other person feels like I have, I'm forced. I got to go someplace else to get it. Does that make sense or... It does make sense, but that goes back to, is this the relationship for you or not? Why, like, why are we forcing the relationship if you need to go somewhere else and your partner doesn't want you to? At that point, you need to decide to separate or figure something out. Because once again, both, party, both parties aren't on the same page. Exactly. So how do you, have you gone to some place where someone's like that, where someone's more sexually active than the next person like yes. for the, with their with their, their, their spouse or partner or whatever yes what is that coming like where's that person's perspective the one that's not so sexually active um more has to do with a personal um preference as far as like just not a sexual person but their partner is um Sometimes I've heard it hurts, you know, so that's a physical thing that they have to go to the doctor for. Um, sometimes I hear, like you said, the disconnect piece where there's, there's emotional stuff going on in the relationship that the person doesn't want to physically connect. Right. How do you, how does someone introduce toys <laughs> into a relationship? Shoot, talk about it. <laughs> Ask about it. Like I would say, uh, maybe the first good question would be, have you ever used any toys during sex, or are you open to using toys, 
or have you ever thought about using toys? Those are some good starting questions, I think. Yeah. I think also too, I think going to the shop together. Yeah, that's fun. And experiencing it together. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because once you do that, you get to kind of walk around. You can't be ashamed because everyone's in there for the same damn thing, right? So mm-hmm. it's like, it's almost, I remember back when they had, you know, like video stores and go rent your videos from, right? They had the porn section, of VHS tapes, right? And you had the regular movies. Uh-huh. It's almost like taboo. Like, you know, you saw someone come out of there, oh, he's a perv, <laughs> right? But when you go to the store with your, with your, with your spouse, or your girlfriend, boyfriend, or whatever, you just your partner, it does make it into an event. It's like, yo, we're doing this. It's the start of something. Then you're kind of looking forward to it. Yo, I can't wait to open this damn day. I can't wait to use it. We need batteries. Let's go to Walmart and get some batteries. Uh-huh. <laughs> right? So I think, I think one, I think you should, the discussion should happen. Then you guys should definitely go and just be totally open-minded. But at the same time, find, you know, you have, you're going to have some boundaries. You're going to have some limits to certain things. Figure out what that is. Talk, talk it through while you're there. And actually, I think ask questions while you're there. That's what the people are there for to help out. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I think a lot of times, I think men get in their own way of being the whole macho man. You know what I'm saying? But then behind closed doors, they're like, yo, like, you know, they want to do anything. Mm -hmm. We would just kind of just let down the fucking shroud or open the curtain and be like, yo, let's just do this. Let's make this happen. This is what I like, this is what I don't like. Mm -hmm. Have fun with it. I think we're too much in our own way to let things happen like that. Yeah. So what do you think as a guy to kind of fix that for the next generation at the very least? Next generation is definitely softer than my generation. I think they're already there. Oh, okay. I started, it started out with the metrosexuals from back in the day, right? Yeah. Now with the, the new generation, millennials, they're way uh-huh. softer. Okay. They're a lot to me, I think, because these kids grew up with eighth, eighth place trophies. When I grew up, you being you know if you lost you was you just the first no being second you were the first loser. These kids growing up now that they're, they're young men, they got eighth place. They got ice cream pizza and they still got a trophy for being eighth place. Yeah. So that, to me, I think they're more soft than as hard as I had to be in the ghetto in the hood in Brooklyn. When I wasn't walking in the streets in Brooklyn in the projects and Thompson's projects, I had to walk with a grill on my face all day long. Someone to fuck with me. Mm-hmm. Right. So that right there, that environment, it makes you tough. And then you're comparing stories to other heads. And it's like, yo, you certain things you got to say you don't do because yeah. it's not manly. You know what I'm saying? So if you're like getting your salad tossed, you can't tell it to your boys. They're like, yo, you're gay. You know what I'm saying? So that's where the communication is totally different now where this generation coming up doesn't think that way. My old head generation, oh, yeah, you're gay. You do something like that. You get your finger in the butt. Oh, you're gay, bro. You're crazy. Yeah. Don't talk to me like that. Get away from me. So yeah. I think it's definitely a totally different perspective because now ghettos are becoming less and less and less, right? Mm-hmm. That stigma of that man type of banter, that macho-ness is kind of going away. Gotcha. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? The macho I think it's a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing. I think you can still be open-minded and do your shit, but I think it's an attractiveness too, right? Like you want to see kind of a man have his chest out walking like he has command of the room. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like that when you, you, you're someplace and somebody walks in like, damn. It's only for a woman though. When you see a confident person, a confident woman walk in, man, it's just, they, they just suck the air out of the room. The attention goes to them, right? That's something you want. If you have a man who's just a little punk ass and just walks in the room, hey, baby. You know, it's, it's cool to have a conversation with possibly, but it's like, are you really attracted to that person because of it? You know, he's kind of soft. He's, you know, he's still getting the manis and petties with you. Are he, is he doing some manly stuff? And don't get me wrong, I get pedicures too. My feet jacked up. I want to make sure they look good, right? But do you want to do everything that's not macho? Or maybe I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? I could possibly be wrong. Maybe it's just because of how I grew up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To where how the people look at it differently now where... You no, know, I would never wear tight ass pants. Yeah. I still wear my Tim's to the beach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> with your long t-shirt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And no, I, I would have the long t-shirt, but like you know, I've just my clothes always fit right. But I'm not gonna yeah. get no super tight ass pants. 
Yeah. I'm like, yo, what's up with this? I'm not going to go to the women's section about my, my clothes. Right? I got you. So, where I wear pink. Yeah, I wear pink. I wear some coral color, whatever. But it took a while for me to, to not associate that with being gay. But that, again, that was a generational thing. I think right now with the new generation, they're just not as tough. I think they're, they're kind of soft. But I think they're open to do more things, though. Mm-hmm. Which my former generation, my current generation, isn't. You know, so I, th- I think it's it's a plus and minus. Depends, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And if you look at like, even like from like men in Europe, from England, they went through the same thing. Like they seem so freaking like like prim and proper all the time, and just kind of like you know, um, very conservative men. Mm-hmm. And then the so-called Americans were so like the cowboys, right? We're just so like rah 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 in your face. But again, that's, that was my hip hop generation, my culture growing up in the nineties. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we had to handle you know, the fitted hats, we had the tims, had the baggy clothes, and we had to walk, we had to walk and talk like how we how, how we did in the hood. Now, as like I said, it's not that way. So the, everything's different, especially, and it comes down to being sexual because again, like I said, there were certain things you couldn't talk to your boys about. You couldn't get advice. So if one of your boys liked some freaky shit, you really didn't know because he couldn't talk about it with you. That he had to talk to either no one or just keep it together with his girl. And then from there, you even were scared that if you break up with your girl in a bad way, she's going to spill the beans, which happened always in the hood on the block anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you find out your boy got his choice is a salad toss, or he has something in the crack of his ass. You're like, oh shit, yo, Jimmy liked that, yo. <laughs> hey, Jimmy was like, that type of dude. <laughs> and now it's like, if someone talks about it, saying they get it done, it's like, you know, like I said, it. It's so prevalent now. It's so accessible as far as information. And yeah. social media has made it to the point saying, I can find my group that does like this shit. Yes, and I think that's important. I, that speaks to that social wellness piece of mm-hmm. the whole um, sexual wellness is that so you got surround your, you got to surround yourself with like-minded people. Absolutely. You know, that's important for your own, you know, joy and happiness. No, absolutely. You know, so I think that's where... I think too, like having a great partner that can introduce you to certain things and you be and you be willing to kind of flow with it and fuck with it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that can open up your mind and your curiosity at the same time. And then finding those groups that say, you know what, I got the same interests. It's like any other groups, like you like this fucking so or you like cars. You're gonna find a car group or car club, you're gonna find a sewing group or, 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 or club. It's the same difference. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think people tend to shy away from those type of clubs. You know, you hear about swinger events and stuff like that, and people automatically think of things like that. But it's not always about that. It's not so much, so much like in your face that way. Mm-hmm. People just communication, hey, I do this with my husband on this day, or when we have vacation, our vacation is like this, or we have kids, how you maneuver around the kids, especially young kids, right? So it's like having those, that, those groups and having those outlets to speak to other parents or other couples in a similar situation where there's, you know, long distance relationships to my, my husband or wife is a corporate head and I'm staying at home mom or dad. How you make that connection to still be attractive to them when they come home? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you partner with certain groups, to your point, that can really give you a lot of information you need to make that sexual connection still successful and still keep that connection going. Yes. yes. No. So it's just a matter of, I think a lot of times it comes down to this. People just, man, they just get too much in their head, man. They're just too busy. They're busy just being busy sometimes. <laughs> I like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, people like to talk shit, right? People just like to ha- just be busy to say they're busy. They show it on Instagram. And then they forget about what they really truly need to pay attention to, which would be their spouse, their partner, whoever. Yeah. And a lot of times it's that sexual piece. You know, yeah. if you're working a, a, you gotta keep perspective of your priorities. Because right. that that's what's dictating our choices that you make every day. And so if your partner and your relationship is not a priority, well then it's you know, you're not gonna be intentional about making it work. No, you're not, man. You're absolutely not. I think I think you're right about that. But then it comes down to right to the relationship itself. At that point, the relationship sour. The relationship is the sexual relationship is not going to be there either. True. Yep. Yes. And that's one of the basic. That's one of the basic things I always say is that I'm not selling sex. I'm selling orgasms. Just like you said that that being intimate with your partner 
your relationship, you know, and, and learning them, it made the sex even more intense. And yeah. that's what you want. That's the goal. Yeah, because, listen, if you start pushing yourself, right, or pushing your spouse in a good way, not in a bad way, and you start doing certain things, like I said, it, it really gives you a different perspective in a relationship as well. And you mm-hmm. start, you know, respecting that person more and more and, and understanding that person more and more. Because now you're sharing something so freaking intimate. It's beyond just the act itself. Yeah. Like, you, like your connection, your emotional awareness becomes heightened. Yes. And, I, and I think that's where men need to learn from women a lot more because we're, we're, t- we're told not to be so emotional. We're told not to be so in tune. Like you scrape our knee, you can't cry. Man up, man up, man up. That's always being told, right? Mm-hmm. For women, you're allowed to be emotional from day, from Jump Street, from, or from day one. So having a, a woman that's super connected and then willing to, my wife did that for me. My wife has definitely shown me a lot more to be emotional and how to have really be connected. And because of that, like the orgasms are fantastic. You know what I'm saying? Like the sex is even more like, I'm like, wow, this is, this is dope as shit. Like this is the best yeah. I've ever had because you, I'm allowing myself to be so connected and kind of vulnerable. I think that's where dudes need to be like, you don't have to be so powerful or so manly all the time, especially in the bedroom. And he said the key word, you allow yourself to do it. Mm-hmm. That's the part. You got to you gotta let yourself be vulnerable. You got to let yourself be free. And doing that is relaxing and freeing, which goes into that whole fear and trauma piece. It, we, yes. we, we stop that because we've had past experiences that didn't go so well. So we just want to avoid that outcome altogether. No, absolutely. When I was raped by my stepmom when I was 11, that, that, that tore me up. That made my engagement with sex totally different. Yeah. Like I, was, I, I wasn't having sex to enjoy it. I was just having it just to smash and that was it. There was no connection. With, and I got told that too. I was like, yo, they were like, yo, are you here? You're not, you're, you're mad cold with it. Like you're just sticking me. That's it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize that because from being from 11 years old, I was having sex with my stepmother for almost two years. And she was just telling me what to do and how to do it. And that was it. I yeah. didn't realize I was being raped. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then became a teenager to my adult, my adulthood. I just would, I was just sexually retarded. <laughs> I did not know what the hell to do. You know what I'm saying? I know about the connection and emotional awareness and especially even for myself. Yeah. And not until I fixed that mental piece was like, okay, well, this is supposed to be a joyous act. You know what I'm saying? This is supposed to be something that a person that really enjoy and feel and not just get it done and over with. I'm like, yo, all right, bet. I'm done. I got my rocks off. Let's keep it moving. Right. Like using it as like a stress reliever or something. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I think you're right. Now, if you have issues, you got to get them fixed right away because it's definitely going to bleed into your sexual life. Yeah. And then when we get into relationships, man, that's a big mirror. It's like our our triggers are highlighted for some reason. <laughs> yeah. If someone else is actually paying attention to us and and listening to us and we are kind of being vulnerable, even if we're not all the way open, we're still a little bit open. And that's just another mirror for us. So yeah, I can see how it's hard. Absolutely. I think I think nowadays things are definitely opening up. I think because you see a lot more visuals, you know what I'm saying? It get, it's it's weird, like I said, how on TV it's out there and the movies is out there. I think it's still there's still issues at the home type and home base. You know, people are still a little more conservative at home still. I think between friends, you're, still, you're open. Mm-hmm. But I think for some reason at home, is still conservative. It has to be broken out. Because we're not teaching our younger people, to, like, again, the teenagers, really what it's about. We're, we're, we're messing up as adults teaching them about the sexual, the sexual themselves and looking at, hey, if you masturbate, it's okay. Yeah. It's, not, it's not wrong. You know, to, and to your point from the beginning of the, when we spoke, when they're young, you know, when you teach them about their, you know, their hands, fingers, and toes, and not calling it some safe word, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's call it what it is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And make them fully aware. I just, just because we brought it up again, like I always say that it's very important to teach the actual word for safety reasons at the very least. Because yeah. for example, if you know you taught your daughter that her her vulva is a pocketbook, now you guys are at the family's house, right? And everybody's playing, you as a parent drinking, laughing, and your daughter comes up to you and say, Sam touched my pocketbook. Like initially you're just like, oh you guys are playing because a pocketbook could also be a purse. You know what right. I mean? 
But if they come up to you and say, Sam touched my vulva, oh, that's alarming. Now, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, for real. <laughs> and that changes, the whole con- that changes the whole situation on even just the response to a, to a kid being assaulted or an adult being assaulted. That changes the whole dynamics, if they're believed or not. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I think... Um parents cannot just be afraid to talk to and there's no right there's no right or wrong way to do it you just have to do it you you can't read about it you can't read a fucking book from amazon about it either like everyone's gonna probably run try to get a book um which i think you should write one anyway and get they should get jasmine's book when she writes it (laughs) i think i think this is huge subject it's not really touched a lot and if not if it is touched it's not really no one's really aware of it you know what i'm saying it's a hidden it's a hidden thing within families to your point Call it what it is. Again, if that person, because it happened to me, like, you know, I was 11 years old, I knew what parts I had. I wasn't aware what they're supposed to be doing with them. Mm-hmm. And then the way I was taught was totally wrong. My whole introduction to that was a bad introduction because of, of my stepmom. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So to your point, having that awareness and then kids know what's, what's right from wrong in the beginning mm-hmm. could, could really change someone's sexual i guess style and awareness for for a lifetime yeah you know? for a lifetime so man this is this has been dope man you immediately enlightened me to a lot of stuff man <laughs> 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 so what's what's the future for you like what's going on like what's what's your next process going okay well um I will be doing a sex exercise class starting August 10th. In what is Phoenix. that? So what we'll be doing is it's going to be focused on sexual education, strength building, and body positivity. And so the flow of, um, sorry about that. The flow of the class is going to be a um, body positivity act, uh, activity in the beginning. So like some mirror work. And then we'll get into learning. It's going to be a sex position of the week. And so we're going to learn what muscles are being used in that position, whether you're the top or bottom person, left or right person, whatever position it is. And then um, we're going to work, we're going to work those muscles out. Is this for males and females? Yes. I like that. Yes. Let's get out here. Let's, cause it, it, it's, it's, it's also a workout. (laughs) It's also, that's if you dope. want to really get it in and do some fun stuff and different stuff, like you also have to be physically ready. You have to stretch. You have to have some stamina. Absolutely. So that's the goal. That's what we're going to be doing. No, I think you're absolutely right. I think people um, probably misunderstand that as well. Like being fit comes in handy, especially with your stamina. Mm-hmm. That really can make it go, not just longer, of course, but just to, it doesn't get you so winded right away. You know, you don't feel like you're exhausted right away. You feel like you can continue going some more, you know, and yeah. that's, and that's what you want. You want that stamina man, to make, to make it joyful. You just want to have fucking quickies all the time. You know exactly. what I'm saying? And then the, um, for both male and female, the, the, the pelvic floor, we're always going to be working that out too each week. And that needs to be strengthened for many reasons, especially for the women, but it enhances the orgasm for both male and female. So doing your Kegels or just working out your pelvic floor in different ways. That sounds very, very beneficial. So you have your own studio. Well, I'm renting out at this lady. Her name is Miss Yates and she owns Sate Dance um, Fitness Studio. So I'll be renting out space on 9 a.m. on Saturdays beginning August 10th. Man. Yeah, you know, if I was in Phoenix, I gotta go out there and and, and do one. That's that's what's up. <laughs> yep, and I'm still accepted coaching clients, and then I'm um still open to in home parties too. So I people have they host their own parties, and then I'll come and we'll do um either clay and cocktail or like a paint and sip. And the clay and cocktail is is um creating penises out of clay. <laughs> That is and dope. Educating on you know the anatomy of it, but then also how to take care of it. Yo, that is dope as shit. I like that. That's <laughs> hot. That's a beautiful twist. I like that a lot. Yeah. Man. Yeah, we need that in Atlanta. I don't think I have that in Atlanta right now. That's I know. I'm gonna search for it. If not, I'm just gonna have to fly out to you. So 
<laughs> yeah, or, or have me come out. I'll be here. Yeah, for real. I still got family in Atlanta. <laughs> That's what's up. And I'm actually looking to move. So we're actually looking to move too. So maybe I gotta check out Arizona and see what's up. Give it a second look again, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed it. No, you stay dope. Keep on making people aware because we need people like you to keep us stable. Because people get crazy, man. And without sexual <laughs> awareness, man, like we need to learn how to relieve the stress that we be having, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> and the lack of it can definitely drive us crazy sometimes. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Because you also lose touch out of your, with yourself as well. Mm-hmm. You just become numb. So, man, you're a great, great combo. Thank you so much for joining me Thank on the you. podcast. You are the bomb. Um, we're going to give everybody your links in the description below. You know what I'm saying? So you can follow Miss Jasmine Brown on on her IG. You have two IGs. You have your personal one, then you have uh, your wellness one. one. Your yeah, business so one. Right? Professional. I mean, my personal one is the Sex Care Dot with Jay Brown, and then my company is at Alluring Interventions. I love that name too. That's that's what's up. It's fly as hell, man. So, people, you gotta follow her. Connect with her. DM her. Ask her questions. She wants it all. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm ready to talk, people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think you should definitely do some kind of live joint. Do okay. do like an IG live just to get questions, man. I think I think that would be dope. I'll I'll join it too. <laughs> so definitely I'll have to work on that because that's that's one of that's one of my my growth spaces. I do need to get on the videos more, but I just get so shy. I guess I don't know. <laughs> No, I think you, did, you did great. You did great today. You did perfectly Thank fine. You. Yourself. <laughs> you gotta just be yourself. That's really it. Think about it. Like, you know, yeah, a few thousand people are gonna see you. A few million people are gonna see you. But who cares? At that moment, you're just looking into a mirror. At that point, you're looking at yourself, and yeah. just speak your truth like you're doing now. Like, you know, you, what you're doing, you're helping people, and this is in, in a way that people don't think of needing help in. Yeah. So with with this with this conversation we just had, and like people, the people are gonna see it, I'm like, you know what? Damn, I need to check myself. I need to check my awareness. I need to check my relationship. I'm like, where are we at, or the lack thereof of it, and how can we get this going? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you bring you bring a lot of attention to a good thing. You really do. Thank That's you. what's up, man. I'm super proud of you. Super happy for you. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> we're gonna stay in touch. Every guest I have, you no, know, I stay in touch with everybody. I follow up on you. So we're gonna see what's up and. Once I start traveling and stuff, um, if I'm in, in Arizona, I'm going to hit you up and go, let's do an in-person. Exactly. Absolutely. So we're going to make that happen. All right. Yo, thank you again. And everyone, it's Jasmine Brown. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good one. Right. Bye.